I can almost call it a bench. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Uh, if you've been following this build so far, I have uh, several videos on how we've gotten to this point. If you want to see those, they're right up here. But today we're actually going to be talking about doing all the joinery for connecting the legs to the top. This is one of the, the key kind of fun projects and I'm doing something a little bit different on this because there's a live edge on this side and this side is more of a rubo. So I have a rubo style um, traditional uh, double tenon with the front being a sliding dovetail. The back is just a single tenon behind the skirt. So this is going to be kind of a fun and I want to show you what I'm doing to build this. So come along, let's take a look. In the last video, I made these laminated legs. They're about five inches by three inches. And now I need to do the joinery to connect them into the top. I'm going to be doing kind of a traditional rubo on the, uh, the front side of the legs. And that is going to be a sliding dovetail with a uh, rectangular tenon in the back and a piece removed in the middle. It's a very, very strong joint. So basically I need to cut down either side of the cheek of this mortise or tenon, depending upon what you want to call it, uh, a half lap sliding dovetail joint. <laughs> but uh, it's a bit of work because I am cutting through five inches of white oak. Uh, with a saw like this, it goes fairly quickly. Next thing I need to do is remove the waist in between these two joints, and it's much like removing the waist in a dovetail. I'm going to start by chopping down, creating that, uh, that stop cut, and then come in and remove the waist. And it's just rinse and repeat all the way down, or at least halfway, and then I'll flip it over into the other side. And uh, chop in, slice out, and remove. Once you get down a little ways, it's a little easier to come in from the end and chop out large chunks um, all the way down to the depth of your, uh, your stop cut, as long as the grain is fairly straight. And then you can just come in again and chop cut and then remove more waste and over and over again. <laughs> they ended up taking about two inches a piece and uh, with four legs, it goes fairly quickly. Now that all that has been removed, we can create the dovetail on the end of these two legs. And so I start by laying that out with a marking gauge, and then I'll come in with a tenon saw and follow that marking gauge line all the way down. So I'm basically going as the back corner as my mark on that side, and then my marking gauge line on the side towards me. It ended up being a little bit off the line on this one, so I was fighting it a bit, but oh well, I can clean that up with a chisel. Now I need to come in with a saw and cross cut to remove that small piece. And in this case I, I stopped it a little bit short and that way I could just break it off and then uh, clean it up with a chisel as I need to clean up the face a little bit. Uh, so this allows you to get a really nice, tight, smooth, 90 degrees joint that uh, will fit very well into the bench. On the other side of the bench I'm going to be doing a through tenon um, so that the leg will be face uh, will be flush with the face of the skirt and this means I need to remove a cheek from either side of this rectangular tenon and so I can just remove it and then clean it up a bit with a chisel and make sure that this is a uh, well a tenon joint as opposed to the half lap sliding dovetail on the other side. Now I need to make all the mortises for the stretchers to connect into the legs so I need to start by boring out all of the mortise joints where all of the stretchers will connect. And this is kind of a long process because there are a lot of mortises to be done out and there's a lot of material to be moved. These large ones um, go two and a half inches into the body and so you gotta drill down a good long ways and put in a bunch of holes. And to be honest, this is the boring part. Okay, you knew that had to be coming. <laughs> but uh, slowly but surely, you can march your way through all of these mortises and drill them out. Then we need to actually come in with a chisel and start chopping out the waste. And here you can see, I basically will start by taking off the nubs in between the boring holes. And I'll slowly work my way up to the line. I'll stay away from the line as long as possible. And then on my last one, come down and square it out. And you can occasionally blow out the hole to see what's inside and uh, go to town. Now I need to cut a little bit out of this live edge to allow the leg to sit flush on the bottom. So I flip the top over and I start cutting down until I get a line that is parallel with the top of the table. Um, a fairly small cut on either side. I just need to make sure it's in the right place for where the leg will join into the top. 
Then I can come in with a chisel and clean out the waste in between these two cuts down to my line that I drew earlier. Now, in order to make that fit this uh, rectangular tenon I cut earlier, I have to actually make a little bit longer on the front face so that it fits down over the skirt. Now we need to start making all of the mortises in the top, on the underside of the top, for the legs to go in. The legs will be going completely through the bench, so I can set the legs on there and trace out where the lines need to be, and then come in again and bore them out. I'm going to go down about two-thirds of the way through the top. This top is uh, four and a quarter inches deep, um, so a good ways down. And just as before, I'm going to come in with a chisel, stay away from the line as long as possible, and then eventually sneak right up on the line and cut a nice square edge. And then I'll check the leg and put it back in and check the leg and put it back in until I get a really nice clean fit. Since I've gone through about two-thirds of the way through from the bottom, I need to flip this beast over and then transfer my lines to the top. Uh, I made nick marks on the bottom so that I can put a square on it and uh, draw those lines perfectly square up to the top and get the exact same meeting locations up there. And I can then check my marks with the actual legs, lay it out there and make sure my lines fit. After doing testing and cutting all the holes, you can fit it in there and here you can see how tight I'm actually making these legs fit. Um, they are in there pretty darn snug, and I like it that way. The last thing I need to do is cut the uh, sliding dovetail on the front. So I can actually just do that by make, making a mark and following it freehand. Not as hard as it looks, um, just making two cuts. Just make them on an angle, it's not that difficult. If you do run into a problem, you can clean them out with a chisel. And in this case, you just need to come back in and clean out all the waste in between those two cuts, and voila, you have a sliding tenon. Now I need to make the, the stretchers that go front to back. And I made the stretchers earlier, but I need to actually get their exact measurements. So I put the legs into the table, and then I can put the stretcher up there and transfer their exact marks and cut them to length. I'm going to be creating tenons on these exactly the same way as I did um, creating tenons on the long stretchers in the last video. And so once I have all of those tenons, I can put all of those marks onto the legs and then again, it's more of the same thing over again, boring work and chiseling away. <laughs> uh, more and more and more of it. Now I'm actually gonna be doing a draw bore connection into the tenons, so I'm going to be putting a hole through the mortise. This hole is basically center of the tenon all the way through the mortise. Then I can slide the tenon into that hole and put the bit in through the hole I just drilled and transfer the line onto the tenon. Now that I have line on the tenon, I can back the auger up and draw a, a drawboard hole through the tenon that will match the mortises. If this is confusing, I'm gonna do a whole video on drawboard tenons in the future, so keep an eye out for that. But then I can just drive the pin through, and traditionally, I wouldn't need any glue, but I'm gonna use glue in this case, just because I can. Oh well. <laughs> now it's time for the final assembly. So I can stand up the legs and get everything into place, get it all lined up, put all of the stretchers into the correct holes, make sure that everything is fit, and then start pounding this beast down. Because it is so tight and so big, it takes a lot of force. This is a wooden face two pound mallet, and it is perfect for this. I can just go around and slowly drive it down into place. And I get it fairly close until I can flip this bench over, which was a lot of work itself, and then use the weight of the bench to drive the legs all the way down. And voila, I have a standing bench. I'm really looking forward to working on this thing. There you have it. This has been an absolute blast and I'm really looking forward to it. I think I have about a week more of actual work on the bench and then the bench itself will be generally functional. Um, I'll have a, to do a few more things. I'm still waiting on getting the chops for the two leg vices. So that will be coming along. But uh, yeah, I'm really liking how this came out and I'm hoping you do too. If you did like this video, please hit like and go ahead and click the subscribe button. I have my second channel right over here with some behind the scenes information. And I do wanna say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this channel is, is still continuing and I get to put out information like this all the time. If you'd like to find out or help out with Patreon, it's right down over here. And until next time, have a wonderful day.